And what camps were you in? 2757 Camp Narrows. Camp Narrows, okay. A Bluebell, South yeah. Dakota. They built a berm so you can't even drive down or walk down or anything anymore. Oh. Uh, several years ago, when he was a little younger, we were here and we could still walk down. But the, the bridge had huge timber and they broke and fell down and that was the end of it. The camp was down from Bluebell and, and, and those first was like that. And uh, it had water and sewer and a whole bit. And the, the uh, I mean this was not a tent camp, this was a primary camp. You had the big buildings and... Oh yes, and, yes, yes. And, and was this the first camp that you that you were at? Yes. And That's the, the only and the camp. Only camp. Yeah. And and how long were you in that? A year and a half. A year and a half. What? Wow. In other words, I arrived in uh, January 1939, and I left Ju June 30th, 1940. And when you did you have a did you have employment lined up uh, when you left? I became a harvester. A, a heart uh, like a grain harvester of uh, well, yeah. Well, well, I picked potato, picked up potatoes, topped sugar beets. Uh, well, I didn't. No, I didn't work in the grain harvest. Picked apples, picked pears. And I decided that was a stupid thing to do. <laughs> <clears throat> so, on January 1941, I joined the Army. Okay. Okay. And do and you think that the... Was this camp sort of under a, a, a military type the first, organization? Yeah, or? well, if you read the letter, it tells in there, the first was... Was, was Captain Paul Paulson. Uh, um, the reason I remember that, my, my name is Danish, and he also was a Danish, because he was S-E-N. So I remembered his name. Danish, they, they had a lot of influence in this part of the country, because if I remember right, uh, Borglum was Danish. It could very that well be. That, that did uh, you, usually, if there was a Danish name, it was the end was S E N, but not always because mine is only L E H N. <laughs> and uh, uh, speaking of Rushmore, did you did you have anything to do with Rushmore? Did you did you guys go up there at all and do do anything or no? I remember the first six months. There was a crew that went and hauled slash. I didn't ever work on that crew, but there was a crew that went every day and hauled the, 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 the rocks away to some place. Sure. But that only lasted the first six months, and they quit going there, so yeah. they changed something. Okay, okay. Um, otherwise, they went off, well, they worked in Wind Cave, and we bought forest fire and all that sort of thing. We built buildings at the Custer State Park office, and things like that. Okay. So we were pretty much localized. Uh, uh, I didn't, I was fortunate I got to work with a man named Harvey Jones, and uh, we taught, well, I, he taught me how to put shingles and to lay oak flooring in the building. That was one of the Custer State Park offices. Okay. Of some kind that night. Is that the Harley Jones that had the buffalo broke to pull a wagon? I don't know that at all. Uh, he probably was capable of doing that, but uh, I only worked out in the field for six months, and then the man who was running the exchange. Uh, quit, went away, and, and I 
told them that, well, I studied bookkeeping in high school. I could do that. So I ran post exchange for, the, for one year. So that, I, that excluded me from a lot of stuff that's going on. Uh, but why did you, it was sort of a mechanically inclined young man. He ran the, the um, steam engine that ran the sawmill. Uh, and so those that were out, those on the jobs, could tell you a lot more than I do or I know. Well, that, that was probably better duty that you had uh, 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 than, than well, some of the other guys had, well, wouldn't you think? Well, I never had to go out in the snow and the rain or that stuff. Uh, but I did, but the camp needed something from Rapid City every once in a while. So there was no, the people were all gone in the daytime. So if there was somebody had to go to Rapid City, so I drove to Rapid City many times, as much as once a week. But it was always daytime when they're out working in the fields. It's cold. And what vehicle did you take? What type? Did they I had take? an old Chevrolet truck. And and that's what you took to town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it all it also hauled the men on Sunday or on Saturday night into Custer, and on Sunday morning, the people who wanted to go to church. And did, were you at that time? Was it the, the same system that we hear about? You get thirty dollars a month, and you had to send twenty-five dollars went home to my parents. Okay. It allowed my father to pay off his debts and leave the little village of Elba and go to a city or a town where he could have work. Wow. Oh, wow. Do you think? Do you think this the, the type of program that you that was in place then? Do you, you have any sense of if that might work now? Yes. <laughs> Franklin Roosevelt was a smart man. He says, if you put it down here, where's that money going to go? Trickle up. There was money to pay off debts. There was money to buy groceries. There was money to buy gasoline for your automobile. When you put it up on top, where does it all go? Those guys that are smarter, they're grabbing all off. The guy down here, he's out of luck. Franklin Roosevelt, I'm speaking about. Yes, I understand, and that's yeah. and, and, and that's. Uh, so, so the tr it took say maybe two or three years for the trickling to get up, but it did. And do you think that the the young folks today would would. Uh, Accept that type of hard work. It, uh, I, I'm, I'm not trying to put words no, in your mouth. No. I, I, just, I would think. Uh, we have a lot of people that come in and say we should put this type of program in place now. Well, one of the things that occurred because of that program when World War II started, they had all these young men already trained to live together and, and to respond to orders and uh, yes, I think it was a very good program and yes, it could be helpful today. There's no question that it was a, a, a good program yeah. and particularly in this part of our state, the amount of work that was done is, is, is remarkable. Well, it was a good program in Nebraska too, where I'm from. Course, yes, sir. So where I worked and where I'm from seemed to be greatly helped by, by all of them. Yes. Yeah. Hey, do you have any questions? I, I'm oh, yeah. just kind of rambling on here. Well, you said you had a site camp at Wind Cave. Yeah, that, do you know what that means? Right, and okay. I was just wondering, um, this was because Wind Cave Camp had already moved out to the Badlands. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it must have been because yeah. I just remember we had a group that went down there, and I think they only stayed a month. 
But as I understand, they work down in the cave itself, setting up the lighting and whatever. He told me something this morning about somebody he talked to about getting the concrete down. And they don't tell him about this. And that was a really interesting story. They took the inner tubes, like truck inner tubes, and they cinched up one end and then bound it up. And they'd pour the, the liquid, liquid concrete into the inner tube, and then they'd sit and they'd carry this thing over their shoulders down into the cave to uh, pave the walkways within the, within the cave. Yeah. What kind of things did they, did they sell? in the post exchange? Uh, not, not cigarettes, there were no tobacco. Uh, candy products, uh, shaving products, uh, personal grooming products, you know. Um, and being we didn't have electricity 24 hours a day, and that eliminated the possibility of having frozen uh, there was, I don't know how they did it, but in the evening there was electricity in the post exchange and there was electricity in the, in the, uh, in the cooking facility. Uh, and I do not know how that was. I wasn't interested. <laughs> I just had electricity. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the, the chief cook and the baker lived in Hot Springs. So, so they had where where you ate in the in the mess hall or the yeah. kitchen. They had electricity. Uh -huh. and, and speaking of mess hall, how was the food? Well, you see, when we would get there, we were say maybe 135 pounds and after six months we were 165 pounds. <laughs> what, what, was that muscle or brown book? Both. Muscle oh, okay. and food. Okay. Both <laughs> muscle and food. As I say, the first six months I, I was out muscling and we sort of <laughs> ate a lot. Uh, and, and the project we had at the state park office or in that area, they always gave us food to take with us. So we had a sort of a lunch. And I found you could make good coffee in an old uh, five gallon metal container. <laughs> I also learned that in four days you could treat teach a uh, young deer to come and eat out of your hand. <laughs> so I, I really enjoyed being out in the field. I, is that you? Yes, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is good. That's me. So you had a pet there, right in the end, right? Well, the, 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 well you can't. The mother deer was way back here, and she kind of would keep coming a little closer, and there was a buck, but he was always way in the back. He never got close. But the little one came, so she finally, in about four days, she ate, I'd hold it, and she'd come up and eat it out of my hand. You say that? Oh, for the, goodness sake. Oh, yeah, there, there is a deer in the back. I didn't see yeah. that. <laughs> Uh, so, so be, besides giving young men something to work, we had opportunity to get into nature and see what we could do, and, and it was very interesting for a flatlander. Like if, if you've ever been to Nebraska, you can see for miles. I have. Uh, I'm I, I from. I was raised on a farm. Uh, about 35 miles west of Yankton. Okay. So yeah. I know I know what you're talking about. This is a lot different out here. Yes, it's <laughs> different. Yeah. 
did you, did, when you came in, did you come in, were there any other fellows that you knew that Whitey, came in with you? Whitey Jewett is the only okay. one who worked for Prairie Van Wee. Okay. He and I got on the train in Grand Island, Nebraska. It was steam engine at that time. We pulled in the train. And the next day we were at Custer and they met us at the depot and away we went. So when when you when you were done and you left, did you go home on the train again? No. I went somewhere uh, in South Dakota and was a harvester. And I don't remember where I went. So did the did they give you a lunch to take with you on the train? No. Because some, sometimes when they were going, if a guy was going back to his home, they'd give him a lunch. And what town is the Corn Palace in? Mitchell. Well, that's where I went with a man from here, and he and I became the farmer of the harvester. And was it were you was that a crew that moved around then that, that did this harvesting that you're that you're talking about? You, yeah, you, we harvested in South Dakota and Idaho and someplace else. How, how big was the how big was the crew? I mean, how many were there of you? Oh, how many working in the harvest field? Oh, maybe only two or three because the fields here in South Dakota are not big. Uh, he just happened to know farmers, so we worked for the farmers. Um, wow. We worked until it's, we worked until it got so cold you couldn't harvest anymore. I went back to southern Nebraska, then where my parents were, and then I joined the army in January in North Platte. And how long were you in the military? Uh, I was retired in 1942. I took two machine gun bullets on the island of Bougainville, which was a Solomon Island. Uh, and one went through the, my, my right ilium. The ilium is this big bone that our leg hooks into. And it's like the last when it goes through the bone, the bone splinters. So it took a long time for that to heal. Uh, so, <laughs> been there, done that. I understand. I understand that. Did you did you go to a normal <laughs> school? It says you in this letter that after the army you were a math school teacher in St. Louis. Then we moved to Sacramento in 1962, and I taught until 1987. Well, I became a counselor in high school. So you you must have gone to to no, college or to the University some... of Oregon in Eugene. Oh my! To get my credential to be a sure. counselor. Yes. There, there, there's a few before that. Um, when I was uh, started, they were living in uh, Pennsylvania. He was going to Carnegie Mellon or some, okay. something because he'd been hired by Westinghouse Electric. They sent him back there. He was working on maybe a, an electrical engineering degree. And then he, um, my mother was from St. Louis, so back to St. Louis they went. And uh, he, uh, my, my whole growing up till I was 12 or 13, I remember dad went to night school, went to work in the daytime. And like like he said, we moved to California in 61 or 62, and uh, both he and I were going to uh, Sacramento State College. He was working on a master's degree and teaching credentials, and I was working on a bachelor's degree. We, we weren't there at the same time because he was working in the daytime, and I was you know, your basic normal freshman going to school. And then uh, in... 68 or 69, he took a sabbatical and went to the University of Oregon and got his uh, master's in counseling and then returned to the city school district in Sacramento and worked as a middle school counselor until he retired. So you were always in quest of knowledge? Oh, yes. 
if you get onto that system, pretty soon you can't get off of it. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's a good system to be in. I have a question. My name isn't in here. It will be. It will be. In a few minutes, we'll <laughs> put it in there. Otto printed these out here. I know. I and know. Uh, we, we, we continue to work. Um, the, the CCC published annuals through 1937 oh, and yeah. after that we're yeah. at the mercy of people telling us yeah. where they were when they were yeah. and um, as we I, I have a lot of um, newsletters so I'm going through those oh, yes. getting names and periodically auto prints out another set the, the new and improved, yeah. most up-to-date. <laughs> well, I, I just, you know, Gary said, you know, well, maybe, maybe those three grandchildren he has might come to South Dakota sometime and we we'll look for Grandpa's name. And, and yeah, we will, we will, well, we'll get it in there. there. Yeah. Did you guys get to go to, you, did you get to go to, you, you mentioned going to church on, on, I'm assuming, Sunday morning, but did you get to go to town for, for a, Saturday, a, a movie or a, Saturday uh, evening and Sunday morning. And were there any? And then I drove the truck to, to with the oh okay stuff no. people no. back there, so I got to go every Saturday <laughs> and every Sunday. Did were there rule? Did they? Uh, uh, how do I, I think I think. If they were, and they had to be there by 10 o'clock, and we waited till 10:15, and then we left. And if they were on the truck, they walked the eight miles. And were there? Did any of these fellas get uh, get any kind of mischief in town? Or? No. no. Okay. Never had a cause to go pick anybody up from the police station. Never had any cause to. Um, go there for a special reason of some mischief or something. Not once did I you know, in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, most of them were from very poor, poor families and they knew enough and to, to not become pests. And they were hard working young men. Well most of most of the men in your camp that you knew, were they farm kids or city kids? I would say 90% were farm kids and 10% city kids. Hmm. As I understand, in some areas, uh, destitute World War I soldiers were in the CC camps. Yes. But the one I was in was all young and out of high school. What what we've read is that the the veterans camps were separate. Well, they had the yeah. veterans pretty much together because yes, they yes. were older and, and married yeah. and yes and, yes I understand yeah I knew that and and some I just learned a couple of years ago that some of the veterans were able to bring their families not to live at the camp but to live nearby nearby. And in Rapid City, there's a, it's a called Susan. It's an mm -hmm. Indian hospital. And at the, at the time that the, the men were at, by Piedmont, at Calcite was the camp, their family stayed at Susan. It was, oh, yeah. it had been a school, it had been an Indian school, and at that time it was empty. Oh, yeah. And later it became a hospital. <laughs> but there was a lady that, came to visit from, uh, I think, Indiana, who was a little girl and lived there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so she went and visited with her daughter mm -hmm. and uh, an historian there at, at Susan. <laughs> Did you have a driver's license? Did they have them at that time? I had my Nebraska driver's license. Okay, so, okay. Cost me a quarter. <laughs> I still remember it. I went in and laid a quarter on the counter and she handed me my driver's license. 
You did. There was no uh, driving. No, 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 just pay for your driver's license. That was <laughs> They're still issuing them in the same county courthouse building in yeah. St. Paul. Is that right? Yeah, we went there on one of these trips a couple of years ago. <laughs> Walked in and said, hadn't changed much in 75 years. You, you say uh, you were there a year and a, and a half about. I was there, yeah, I was there uh, three, six months period. And, and so you would have gone through a winter. We wore uh, six buckle over shoes and 20 inches of snow, yes. <laughs> and, and during the, the, that period, what, what were the men, what, 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 what were the duties, what were the... Uh, well, this man's name, who should be on here, he can tell you that because he worked in that office that provided what we were all going to do. But the camp stayed together, I mean, the, the, all the men were there and they, oh, they stayed the yeah. whole time. Oh, yes, yes. They wanted the uh, ceiling of the exchange to have the new uh, paper. Uh, I made the mistake of saying that's what my father did and I kind of can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so they, I forget whether he said, well here's the paper and left. <laughs> so I did do the saving of the new paper. But the rest of that story is was they, they didn't have any wallpaper paste. And, and some others were fretting about how this was going to work. And they didn't want to have to go get some. So he, he went to the kitchen and got regular flour. And, and uh, added water and stirred like crazy until it was you know, the right soupy consistency. And uh, on the wallpaper. I wanted to digress. You, you'd asked him earlier if he thought that the, the model of the CCC in the, in the 30s would work today. And I, I was just looking in this magazine and it talks about the California Conservation Corps. And uh, a good friend of mine was the deputy director of that, so I, I heard quite a bit about it. And it was very exciting to me you know, to, to hear Larry's stories because th this was a, a kind of thing that I'd, I'd heard about Camp Narrows and, and Bluebell and, and, uh, for many years before I ever saw them. And so when I came here and looked at it, it was, yeah, I know about that. But uh, the California Conservation Corps w worked for a while. I don't know if it's still in place because they started it in 76 and that's when uh, a year or two before that uh, when Larry got out of the army and he got hired on by blanking on the guy's name as a disabled veteran that was hired by the state to put this uh, program together and they did the same kind of public works things that the CCC did only with, with the overlay of being in 1976 instead of say 40 years earlier when they weren't as concerned with uh, seat belts and fire extinguishers and, sure. uh, as, as they were then. And I think some of, some of the, the, the government overlay um, at a different level of, of administration really didn't serve the program in 76 really well. We talked about this last night and the night before, and we were saying that it would be it would be a stretch for us to imagine a lot of the young men that we've been acquainted with in the schools where we worked, um, and, and projecting forward to the same age of kids now to, to see them working as hard as the young men that came out here to South Dakota or anywhere else where there's a CCC thing going on. To, to have them actually work that hard without a serious attitude. Mm -hmm. And, and that it's too bad. Because, uh, you know, like you were saying about uh, when, when the, the war started, th there was a whole core of young men ready to go 
who were used to you know, bugging in a room full of 50 other guys and, and using the same bathroom and eating you know, at a common table and, and taking orders and obeying them. I think it's particularly in South Dakota and really particularly in this part of our state, the amount of work that was done yes. and, and forgotten. I mean, I don't know how many people I talk to that, you know, they go through Custer State Park and they, they don't realize how much of that yes. was, it was done by CC. Yeah, exactly. So, I, I think another benefit of, of showing that to school age kids is, is it, it plants in their head that there, there's something they could do.